We all know this story. You took a banger photo. It looks awesome. You're confident to post. You'll get thousands, thousands of millions of likes. And then you have to crop it for Instagram. And then you're either cutting off the feet or cutting off the top of the building. But don't worry. Today, I've got you covered. E aí, I'm Henry, a Brazilian photographer living in Italy, and in this channel we talk photo, video, and tech. And today I'm gonna teach you three different ways that you can crop your images to Instagram without having to sacrifice anything on it. Each picture will require something different, so later you're gonna use either one of these three or a mix of them. All right, let's get going with the first one, so let's go inside Photoshop. Okay, I've already opened my picture here on Photoshop, and this first tool is using directly the crop tool, but you have to mark something that is really important on the top. So you're gonna access the crop tool by pressing C on the keyboard or just coming over here to the left and choosing it properly. Then you're gonna see already the overlay on the screen that you can choose how to crop this image. So for Instagram, we're gonna choose four by five. So we're already gonna set it up here. And then we already have the right shape and you can see that if we crop like that, we're either gonna have it so tight on the tower, which is not cool, or we're gonna have to sacrifice the edge or the feet or something like that. So for this one, the trick is gonna be, we're gonna try to expand the picture a little bit, still on the four x five format, and we're gonna have Photoshop trying to guess what should be in the borders outside of the picture. Let me show you. Up here, just choose this option over here, which is talking about the content aware view outside the original image. That's what we want. With this selected, you're gonna be able to make the selection instead of cropping inside, you're gonna crop outside. So you're just gonna grab one of the handles here and you can press Alt or Option on Mac to make it stay in place and just grow in every direction until you're satisfied more or less with what's gonna be the final size of this image. And then just let go of the mouse. It's gonna show it white, this white border around. Now just press Enter and let's see what Photoshop is gonna do for us. It's gonna try to complete all this white area with what he thinks should be the continuation of the, of the picture. And boom, it's done. In pictures like this, in which you have a pattern that kind of like repeats itself, either sky or clouds or just the wall here on the left, stuff like that. In general, Photoshop does a really, really good job, like in this one, in which you can barely tell that something happened over here. You can see that in some places, like for example, in the borders here, where should be the line more or less, that there's a little bit of distortion, but then these, you can, like here also on the wall, it's a little bit wobbly, but here you don't even notice that much. So then for these things, you can now go in and just fix these small details with the healing brush, and then you're good to go. Technique number one is done. Let's go to number two. Okay, so now for technique number two, we're gonna use the same picture, but we're not gonna trust Photoshop to fill in the blanks. So let's begin by choosing our layer down here and replicating it using Ctrl J or Command J. I'm gonna hide the old one. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna do the same. We're gonna use the crop tool. We're gonna select it here in the middle. And then we're gonna grow this using Alt or Option on a Mac. And just about here more or less is okay. Fine. And then now our option of content aware is not selected. So I'll just accept it. Okay, we're gonna have this empty space. And now you're gonna come up to the marquee tool and you're just gonna select a part of the picture and you don't wanna touch something that can't be replicated really well, like people, for example, or the tower. So just grab a space like this that can actually still be stretched out and fill in that, that gap. So now just be sure that the layer is selected, press Ctrl or Command T, and then you're just gonna grab one of these handles. If you just press and, and drag, you're gonna see that it grows vertically also, and you don't want that. So you can just press Shift at the same time, and then it's just gonna stretch on that direction. And then about here, you're filling completely that gap. And now you see that the angle is a little bit wrong on that wall. So what you can do is you can right click and you can use also Skew. And then on skew, you can just grab the other side here and try to make it more or less right. And then you could just replicate the same thing for the other sides. Like for example, on this side here, just grab Control or Command T and just stretch it out to the right, done. And also here on the top, now we don't have much space because the tip of the tower is right there, but we can try and see how far can we go with this. And now, yeah, actually it's fine. And now we have a small gap here 
that is so small that actually we can manage to also stretch out this part and it's not going to be noticeable. And that's it. It's not perfect. You always have to go in, zoom in a little bit and check if there's something that looks a little bit strange that didn't replicate or didn't stretch really well. But in general, looking quickly like this, it's just fine. And it's going to fit perfectly for the Instagram feed. All right, technique number three. And this one is more useful when there's just a small piece of the picture that you need to fill with something else. Like for example, let's go back to the example number two in which we stretched the left part of the image and then we had that small gap on the bottom. So now what it could do would be to select the layer, Ctrl T or Command T, and then just select Warp. And what it does is it creates a mesh over the picture that you can just push and pull however you want. Let me show you. I'm just gonna grab whatever point here in the middle and gonna start dragging around like this. So you can see that it's kind of like taking that part wherever I move the mouse. And you have to be really careful because it's gonna begin distorting the picture. So you have to try to isolate the parts that you wanna stretch. Let me show you in the bottom here. So for example, if I just click down here and start to stretch, look that I'm stretching the whole image and even the tower is being a little bit skewed now. So what we're gonna do is, let's go back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an anchor in this mesh that we don't want to move. So let's come about here more or less. I'm gonna Alt or Option click and create a dot here. And then now that point is gonna serve as an anchor for us. So let's choose another one that is gonna be the one that we're gonna be pushing, pulling here to try to fill this gap down here. And I'm just gonna grab one here in the middle of this area here. Okay, now if I just drag and pull some part around here, you can see that that part over there is kinda like stuck in place. So we are not distorting the rest of the picture. So if you just do something like this, for example, it's gonna look fine and that's it. You fill that gap without having to do anything else. There are other techniques you could do, like content aware on that part, also selecting just that piece or copy and pasting. But this is a quick and good one to fill just these small gaps, especially useful when you're doing panoramas or this kind of stuff. All right, guys, that's all for today, flash tips. And if you know any other kind of technique, if you use some other method to do the same things, just tell me in the comments below. And if there are some different ones, we can even do a part two and keep helping each other. So see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.